so I work uh, with young people. I, I mean, I, I'm a youth worker. I work with young people from normally 13 to 18 or 24 if they've got um, a, a learning or any sort of disability. In terms of work, I work in different areas with regard to youth work. I work in open sessions, uh, generic youth work and youth sessions in youth centre. And I also work in target projects like music projects with young people that have learning disabilities. I involve in gangs or uh, at risk of being exploited or being involved in, in gangs. And I work in um, residential care with children and young people who have been put into full-time care um, ranging from the ages of 11 to 18 um, kind of meeting their everyday needs and kind of their care and making sure they get some education and receive the appropriate support that they need. Not directly, although um, a few years ago we were under suspicion that one of the young person that we used to work with us in the target project, music project, that might be at risk of being exploited. Um, circumstances of their lives changed and they ended up not um, carry on attending the project, but we did um, enroll into all the procedure, into referring and kind of highlighting it for the school, the social services, but I'm not sure um, what happened later on. And yeah, I've directly worked with um, children who um, are engaged in kind of child sexual exploitation. Um, yeah, so literally directly through um, kind of my role within residential care, a lot of children, young people have been kind of exploited to kind of and within count lines to kind of put jobs and stuff. Um, the children then obviously get moved to areas to kind of escape the kind of gangs and the exploitation. Um, so, for example, we had um, a, a child from Birmingham who was heavily exploited, like sexually, and they moved them to kind of um, London areas to get them away from kind of that people who are exploiting them. Actually, do you think it's a direct focus of work? Because youth work, um, unlike popular beliefs, is not just having a chat with young people, and it's also making sure they are safeguarded because we all got a duty of care towards um, the young people that we work with. And it's important that all professionals are kind of um, trained to recognize the signs because not necessarily the young person that is being exploited, being the victim, not necessarily will tell you. Um, the experiences and the abuse that it's going through. So I think if professionals are trained and equipped with the knowledge to kind of understand and know how to see the signs, it's definitely something that is more collaborative work. We all sing in from the same hymn, and we also understand um, and we're from a better, better. We are put in a better position as a professional to highlight, protect, and safeguard young people in a better capacity. Um, I think, you know, even though we kind of directly deal with it within kind of the work setting, I think it's important for um, people to kind of recognise the signs of it because actually I feel like it's kind of a tip of an iceberg situation. So there is children and people that are classed as being sexually exploited, but actually there's a massive group of young people that are or in the early stages of being exploited. And I think it's really important to recognise their signs um, to kind of deal with that earlier and also to kind of um, help educate children and young people on how what the signs are themselves so you know if they've got friends they can um, know where to seek help so I think it is quite important um, even though kind of directly work with it. What regards obviously it depends on the, um, each charity and each um, you know, charity working with young people and how they, in terms of the training, how they take the, how seriously and how intense the training can be. Obviously, all of that is subject to funding sometimes, but definitely, what comes to exploitation, um, when we're talking about young people, I think some of us professionals probably imagine a young person being exploited by an adult, when sometimes um, 
due to how grooming, you know, the, the, the nature of the grooming, sometimes are the only young people after being exploited that are exploiting their friends and they end up kind of in that network of exploitation without even realizing, because it becomes quite normalized for them, without realizing actually I've been exploited and I'm now contributing towards the exploitation of my peers. I think we definitely need to be more aware um, the young people that do end up exploiting their young people, their, their, their peers, we need to kind of have a more holistic approach and see them as victims and not perpetrators because they end up in that circle of abuse and they need to be mobilized. So definitely having more awareness regarding how to approach and how to identify when a young person is the victim and now becomes the perpetrator and it kind of has those double sword um, function in terms of the abuse. I think that definitely actually is um, the understanding of the children as victims. I think uh, there's a lot of kind of blame shifted onto the, the young person about, you know, why did you get involved with this? Like, why didn't you go out sooner? And actually, there's, I think, an awareness and the struggles and how hard it is to actually get out of that cycle of kind of the abuse that's going on for them. And also how um, actually the kind of the, the, the large amount of fear that they have because of like repercussions and you know the gangs and stuff that are working around that and actually I think we're quite good at seeing you know females as kind of young girls as kind of victims if they're being exploited by an older male but I don't think we ever think about again the children exploiting other children or thinking about young men actually being victims of sexual exploitation um, and I don't think I think there's a bit of a lack of knowledge and understanding around that and also um, a lack of knowledge of how to access kind of specialist support for these young people that you work with because there is organisations that spe specifically work with sexual exploitation and kind of have that kind of deep grooming process. Um, so I think it's really important to kind of look at those um, issues with that information.